hour for tea is half past five and my buttered toast waits for nobody. struggle with sticking to things, including schedules. You don't need to share this personality to go through the same issue, but as someone who's been jumping from project to project almost her whole life, today I'm here to share with you my best 5 tips that have helped me stick to my writing schedule and see my projects to the end, despite adversity. <laughs> But before we start, this video is actually a collaboration with the lovely NNU. So if you don't have a writing schedule yet or you're not sure that the one you have is the right one for you, make sure to head to Anna's video because she's really passionate about writing and she's always going out of her way to encourage other writers and today she's actually sharing her 5 best tips on how to create a writing schedule that works for you. So make sure to check her out. If you do already have a writing schedule, then here's my first tip to stick to it. Make sure it's good. Here's what I consider a good writing schedule to be. A. Realistic. What's realistic for one writer may not be for another. And only you can know how much you can write in a day, week or month. A lot of the writing process is not measurable in words, so I recommend focusing on time spent writing instead. B. Flexible A good schedule allows space for failure. For example, let's say that you plan to write a first draft in 3 months. Instead of dividing the amount of words or scenes by 90 days, Try to remove the weekends and divide it by 65 days instead. If my book has a total of 60 scenes and I want to draft it in 3 months, then I'll try to write roughly one scene per day. Some weeks I can write 7 days a week and that's awesome, because it'll get me to achieve my goal earlier. But if I miss a day or even two days, that's okay too, because I'll still have a first draft at the end of three months. C. Includes reading time. If you have an hour per day to write, but you don't have time to read, then I suggest you change your schedule to write for half an hour and read for half an hour instead. This will mean that you'll write less, sure, but trust me, you'll write better, and that's going to help you more in the long term. My second tip is to track your progress. If you're having trouble sticking to your writing schedule, it's likely that you are overwhelmed by the ginormous task that is writing a book. If that's the case, there's nothing better than to divide the big scary task into smaller ones and smaller ones, until the only thing you need to get done is the very next step. For example, I'm writing a novel which, according to my writing schedule, will only be done by mid-2024. That's so much time and there's so much to do. But I know that, in January, I only need to focus on brainstorming and outlining the story. On a smaller scale, I know that this week I want to complete the timeline I've been working on for the story. Today, I filled out two sections of that timeline. 
Tomorrow, I'll fill out two more. At the end of each writing session, set aside five minutes and track your progress. This will not only help you know your writing process better, so you can improve your schedule in the future, but it's also a constant reminder of the next step you need to take, and that way you'll never not know what to do. At the same time, I think tracking your progress is motivating, at least for me, because it's proof that you're working towards your dream even when the work is not visible yet. My third tip is to write what you're passionate about. It's not uncommon for writers to get demotivated while writing a novel. In fact, I would say every writer experiences this. The trick is to not let yourself be swallowed by the black hole of negative thoughts, and instead, be mindful of the reason why you're not feeling the story you're writing right now. Perhaps you're writing a scene you don't know very well, and it's slowing you down. You could 1. Brainstorm more, so you get to know the scene better and find an exciting way to develop it. Or 2. Move on to the next exciting scene and come back to this one later. Sometimes, my schedule says it's time to draft, but I feel the need to add another scene which I must outline first. To a perfectionist mind like mine, this is conflicting, but I've learned that sometimes what's needed is not what your schedule is telling you to do, so go with your gut when it feels right. My next tip is to write in different mediums. I guess by now you're picking up on the most important key to sticking to a writing schedule, which is flexibility. And my first tip is just another way to introduce more freedom into your writing. Don't just write on your computer. Use a notebook, your phone, and even a dictation app. Having a dedicated space to write is great to stick to the habit and to feel comfortable while doing the work, but it's very likely that you won't be home every single day, so it's good to have other ways to get some words in. Not only that, but changing mediums does wonders for creativity. My favorite medium to switch to when I'm feeling less inspired is pen and paper because I find that my mind is very comfortable with it and the combination is simply magical. And so we arrive at my final tip, which is to do writing sprints. Nowadays, attention span is a big problem for many people and if you find yourself getting distracted while writing, a great solution to this is to set a timer and try to focus for only that amount of time. Pomodoros, which are 25 minute sprints, are very famous, but you can also do 5, 10, 15 minutes. Every day is different and accepting that is key to being kind to yourself when writing gets harder. If you like to have silent and equally hard-working company while writing, I invite you to write with me in a cozy writing session. If you've reached the end of this video, then leave me a Mimo emoji to let me know and also let me know which writing stage you're at at this moment and whether or not you've been following your schedule this year. Alright, I'll see you soon. Happy writing!